Hey there, I just wanted to do a video for my Rotation 411 audience. I um, have to do still the Virgo through Pisces suns with Aries moon for the big 144 series so we can get on to Taurus moons. And I've been having all these ideas for new videos. So um, I just want to add this to my body of work. It's something I touch on a lot with my clients when I'm doing personal readings. Uh, this is the video twin flames versus false flames versus soulmates and also i mean i might have to do a second part to this video because i wrote down all of these really great um soulmate romance type of aspects that i would love to go over but i'm only going to touch on the most pertinent when it comes to you know twin flames false flames soulmates life partners and we'll get into the differences between those also um do check out every month i'll be doing each astrology signs general tarot reading so you can check that out they come out between you know about the first two weeks of the month i'm getting a little faster so that gives me the end of the month to go over some of these videos i have a heart chakra video that i'm working on the only thing is well it's not just the heart chakra it's a chakra video i might do a series on those as well the only thing is is that i more intuitively know my chakras i don't know all of the verbiage per se so i'm doing a little bit more research but i'm pretty close to i was I was torn between Virgo Aries video, the chakra video, and this one tonight. So, um, okay. If you watched my Am I Wasting My Time video, you know, I was kind of playing with the final cut. So I, I like to play with film editing. So I had added in this laugh track and all of this other stuff. And uh, I think for some people it was just a little bit too obnoxious, but this is was a video to wake people up. Like, are you wasting your time on a dead end relationship? So if you want to check that out, I'm, I'm trying to be a little more calm in this video. This video, you know, is the one that everybody wants to know about, right? Twin flame, soulmates. So let's get into it uh maybe i'll put a timestamp for when we got into it <laughs> at the bottom in the description uh so basically i want to go over you know what i think is a twin flame aspect in astrology like the the definitive aspect of that and we'll go over a little bit what a twin flame is and then we'll talk about what the aspect is in astrology that i believe indicates a false twin flame and then uh, get into a little bit about what a false twin flame is and how that plays out and then we'll go into the soulmate and I'm just going to pick my ideal aspect for soulmates. Um, I could probably go more into that and I I'm going to do a part two to this video and go over all these great soulmate life partner aspects. So I probably won't even touch on life partner here. We'll kind of clump that in with soulmate. We'll talk about it briefly at the end. Anyways, okay, so when two people's moons are conjunct, like exactly conjunct, especially in, in the same sign, I think that's in sign right um this is a twin flame aspect okay and when two people have neptune conjunct uranus this is a false twin aspect uh i i there's you know deal breakers those are toxic aspects and that's what i go over in the are you wasting your time video um and i'll i'm actually going to do a, few, a part, couple maybe break that down a little more by each one do another series on that but um so this is just to indicate a false twin flame because we'll go into this first actually and i was thinking this is what a false twin flame is is when um you have a real twin flame because because not everybody's a twin flame all right and more and more people are waking up so they're like realizing that they have one and they're meeting them um we can even have like twin siblings right i think in one of my astrology aspects in my birth chart on one of the sites it says like we'll have a soul brother in this lifetime and i definitely feel that i've had a couple of those probably um so and they passed on and you know they guide you so um with that being said a false twin when somebody has neptune conjunct uranus it is it causes like great uh, ESP. It can even make one of the people really wake up. I think normally the Neptune person can get very, very intuitive. 
it, it might it's one or the other but i've actually experienced this both ways as the neptune person and the uranus person and i i should have looked it up but um in one of these scenarios i like the other person could read my mind like literally i'd be sitting there <laughs> thinking something and uh granted he did have a cancer moon you know so he's I feel like Cancer Moons are highly intuitive, as well as other moon placements, but it's not a moon video. I'll do an intuitive moon video too. I'm gonna have to make a list. All right, um, so this person could just like read your mind. Like you think something so, that like, just very original, you just think it to yourself. Maybe even um, a little bit like a fantasy that you wouldn't want to share with that person, but then when you're close to them and intimate with them, they start telling you, what you were thinking that's neptune conjunct uranus or the other way i experienced it is and actually it was in both scenarios is where you see like this person's name or birthday or like a, a reminder of them like something symbolic over and over and over and over and you will experience that with a real twin also it's a little bit different though because with a false twin like it really is esp you're really picking up on them with a real twin you pick up on them too but it's like a proximity thing um it, it's a little bit different we'll get into that but with a false twin it's like the the more signs that you're seeing of them, the more likely they are going to contact you or you're going to bump into them or something like that. Or you're just gonna, it's gonna get to you to the point where you have to reach out to them. So this feels very faded, right? It feels like it's your real twin, but a false twin just precedes a real twin by, um, by igniting that in you, um, sort of waking you up to the symbolism, to the signs, so that you're not so overwhelmed when the real twin shows up. I don't know if this is for everybody, but for me personally, uh, the real twin and the false twin will have a lot of similarities. And, you know, we all have our types as well, but um, this will be like, they could be born like a day apart or, um, or on the same day at different times, different years. Uh, they could have the same name for some of you um, or very similar. Uh, they can look somewhat similar as well. So anyways, okay. And so a lot of times, you know, Neptune and Uranus aren't the planets that we think of for commitment, but when Neptune is conjunct Uranus, it can cause such a link between two people that they kind of end up together for a long time, regardless of, you know, how crappy the relationship is. You know, it can actually be, in an odd way, a binder. Even though we think of the binding planets more as Saturn and, uh, you know, even Mars and Venus can, and, and the moon can be more binding, the north node, south node contacts, uh, which is sort of uh, like soulmate, is north node aspects. We'll get into that at the end. So twin flame or false twins can be like, they can kind of be very, very destructive because you feel, you think until you meet your real twin that your false twin is your real twin. So. Not everybody has a false twin or meets a false twin. Um, this can also be sort of karmic, even though I feel like that's more the Pluto-Mars conjunction that we, we talked about in uh, Are You Wasting Your Time? Yeah. In a false twin relationship, they're gonna be usually other deal breakers as well, even though there can be really great things, um, some of the best things also. So when you're dealing with a false twin, it's really a um, come complicated so it's got that neptune conjunct uranus is usually the number one sign to me that they're dealing with a false twin um but it can just get very difficult so it's because it creates an intense bond as well because there you might have like venus conjunct mars in there which is a video uh which is an aspect we're going to get into in a minute um and so then at the same time, you could have like no Saturn or Mars square Jupiter. Deal breaker 
but you feel so like drawn to this person and you have all these signs and symbols of them, right? So when you meet the real twin, I don't know what it's like for everybody, but what it's really like is like looking in the mirror at yourself. Now, you might look very similar to your false twin also. And like I said, they could look very similar to each other. You could have a type even, but it won't be that even you're the same ethnicity, right? It can just be that even though you're not the same ethnicity, you have like very similar, I don't know, auras and when people look at you, they get the same kind of impression. Almost as if you had the same rising signs. For those of you that know a lot about ascendance and rising signs, that's our first impression. That's how we come off. Well, you'll very much have these similarities with either a false twin or a real twin. Um, with a real twin, there can be like bi biographical similarities. Um, like patterns of history uh themes things like that and in like it could actually be so intense and overwhelming because you're going to have a moon conjunction now it's really interesting because i stumbled across this article and i probably should have it for reference as well but it was actually a study that they did about first impressions and like uh, love at first sight and if it's lasting throughout time and it was all about um, like it wasn't even all about I think they went through like five different aspects and the strongest ones like the ones that were most reoccurring or something like that were moon conjunctions moon conjunct moon and even trines I think like were right below that moon trine moon now I do feel like a moon trine moon just more indicates that you uh, live really well together, you're very comfortable with each other. It can almost be, it can almost be hard to connect with moon trine moon because we're not seeing people's moons, right? Until, we're, until we know them. So if both of your moons are like trying underneath the surface, it can be hard to connect there. You'd almost have to be like forced into a situation of living together or something and then it would, because remember these kind of things get activated in certain situations. So like Saturn kicks in at once you've been together for a while, right? He's not there in the beginning. So same thing with the moon. You're not really gonna know someone's moon until you get to know them. Unless you have a sun moon conjunction or something, then you'll probably understand each other very quickly or feel very comfortable with each other. That's more like a life partner, soulmate type of aspect, the sun moon conjunction. But I really do think that those uh, create longevity as well and that's why I call it like a life partner doesn't necessarily mean uh, Sun moon conjunction doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna want to marry that person I would say more a moon trine moon is a really good marriage aspect So the thing is with, with the moon conjunct moon is now we're talking about twin flames so again, you're gonna see the same signs proximity like if they're in this uh, close proximity to you with the false twin, you might just be able to pick up on when they're gonna contact you. Kind of like when you talk about a close friend and then they reach out. But with a real twin, like you're literally gonna know, like they could be traveling all over the world and then the second that they're near you, like you'll, the signs pick up and you don't even know like where they are, or what they're doing because you don't always end up with your real twins, right? Uh, the, it is a really good, a really good harmonious emotional life and a good person to live with just like the trine that we see in the life partnerships but it's um it's very it's very overwhelming like the two people when they first see each other it's like they're mirroring each other so it's not like that love at first sight kind of thing where it's like all googly eyes and stuff no this is like very much like you're looking in the mirror at yourself and it's a little bit confusing and odd and um, the power, like the energy can be where you start to imitate each other, mimic each other because you kind of lose yourself, like you lose your own impulse and so then you kind of follow their impulse and, it can, and then they kind of follow yours and it's, it's a, you know, a few seconds and it's like you may not actually end up like with a Venus conjunct Mars where you're going to end up making out that night, you know, or running off together and living happily ever after for a while anyways. Uh, and Venus conjunct Mars is an another very good 
life partner aspect. It's a hot and heavy romance. Like when you two are together, you know, the birds are gonna start singing and the candles are just gonna light themselves, you know. So that's a really good soulmate, like twin, um, soulmate life partner aspect. And if you can find a Venus conjunct Mars, that romance one I'm talking about, with a moon conjunct moon, like the twin flame, that can be, that would be probably like um, the epitome of a relationship. It's like those couples you see when they're like 80 and they're still hot and heavy in the sheets because Venus conjunct Mars, right? And then they're just like so emotionally content with each other. They don't bicker and they've, ne they've never had any major, you know, issues or falling outs. Or maybe they did when they were young, I don't know. But that is Venus conjunct Mars, Moon conjunct Mars, Moon conjunct Moon. Moon conjunct Mars is another story. That'll be another, that'll be another uh, video. But another thing that I want to point out about Venus conjunct Mars is that you really will not meet very many of them in your lifetime. This is why it is considered to me to be a soulmate aspect. You know, there are karmic soulmate aspects as well where you need to work through karma, sort of like a false twin. But with a Venus Mars conjunction, you may only meet one or two of these people in your life. And so that to me is soulmate. It is saying here is a good life partner for you so a little more on twin flames you know the runner and the chaser and whether you meet or not they usually they don't meet um, and if they do there's usually like a 10 year age difference oftentimes you know they'll dream of each other and then they'll meet and they can both be married and never end up together but there's like this intense connection sometimes um, you've met this person and you don't really know them and you might dream about them a lot um, we can dream about anyone but it's so let's get into the signs and symbols of what how your twin flame will show up in your environment okay another way to tell that it's your real twin is that you will see not only will you know like the proximity and kind of pick up on their thoughts or have dreams about them um and the similarities between you two and your lives you will see signs of them so you know people always say like what are the what does this mean i see 888 i see 555 i see 1111 and those are universal numbers and you know i like to read the you know descriptions that are attached as well but i don't really know what those mean i don't feel that those are as persistent to me um as when i see signs and symbols of people and but you know i'm clairvoyant though so um people that I know I mean it can be anyone like friends family I can pick up on things so that's a whole nother video though so what I I think with your you'll see this with your false twins and your real twins actually which is why it's so confusing um, and it could be depending on your level of clairvoyance but you will see their names and their birth date everywhere like um, if their birthdays you know, January 18th, you'll see 118 everywhere. And if you don't see these exact things, like, well, here's an example. Maybe you have different symbols, right? But um, say the number, like California license plates, they have three numbers on them. So you'll start seeing 118, like on license plates. But if this person is your twin or your false twin, so I'm clairvoyant, so I see other people's I know too that aren't you know twins or whatever but um, if they're your false twin or your real twin the phenomena is like you might go outside and you're not thinking about them at all and then all of a sudden you see a car drive right by and it's like says 118 on the side really big and you're like why would there be three numbers on the side of this truck and then you're like thinking Oh, I'm probably thinking about that person too much, but I but I haven't been thinking about them. And next thing you look up, and you'll see 118 on the license plate driving by you. And then you'll get in your car, right? And you'll drive around the corner, and then there'll be a car right in front of you with the license plate saying 118. Things like that. Um, like I said, for me, I'll see that with just normal people I know because I know everyone's birthdays. But um, when you're seeing the same one over and over and over. It can still be a false twin. It can even be a friend uh, that you're picking up on if you're clairvoyant. But um, if it's a real twin or false twin, 
it'll be so consistent. And what I found for me personally is with my real twin, it's about proximity. Um, when he is nearby and I don't even know it, I start seeing the signs everywhere and his name or something or like the, this happened with my false twin actually like the name you know you're at like the coffee shop and they like yell his name really loud in front of you it's for someone else you know or then you turn on the tv and they're telling a story and it's his first name and they're saying it over and over and over again things like that um either with the false twin or the real twin but for me what i found is with the false twins i was actually because of neptune conjunct uranus able to pick up more on when they were going to contact me or when they were going to want to see me um and with the real twin it's more about when he's nearby me but with the false twins it, it, it is when they're coming closer i did verify that like um when they're oh another thing is not just when they're gonna call you or they're gonna come by when they're talking about you or thinking about you you might pick up on the signs as, as well so and it can be other symbols as well say they have like a a shirt or something um you might see that maybe it's a popular shirt you might see it here and there but like all of a sudden you'll see it like one day five times in a day on different people things like that uh, maybe they went to like um, a certain university or they work for a big corporation that has their logo everywhere um, you'll like not be able to avoid that logo you know and so this is my little symbol portion of the video and I'd love to hear in the comments your experiences with signs and symbols a little bit beyond you know the traditional 555 1111 um, because I feel like those you know those are a little bit more personal numbers this is more um, with in regards to telepathy and picking up on your twins. How twin flames mirror each other in the astrology. The other really cool thing about twin flames in the astrology is that, especially if their moons are conjunct, I see this, which is why I consider that to be a twin flame aspect, which a lot of astrologers won't really pin one aspect on twin flames um but it's because not only that study that i found that was pretty cool but uh their charts will like mirror each other the same way that they mirror each other the same way their lives are very parallel uh their charts will be very similar to one another's and um i've seen it i've seen it where it's like it's hard to really put, you know, it take me another hour to go into how I've seen it, but I just, I've seen all this mirroring going on with like, let's say the North and the South node, you know, they might have the same North node or, um, their North nodes could be like, if their North nodes aren't trying, which they can be, that's also like soulmate, just someone you're supposed to be with life partner. But, um, because you're going towards the same goals in life, right? Same destiny. Uh, but if say the twins don't have that they might have where one's north node is conjunct the other south node and the other south node is conjunct the other's north node so for example one's north node could be in pisces and the other's north node is in virgo so that means they're south nodes right it's an opposition so um for some some of you may not know what i mean by that and that's okay but it just um if you if you run the astrology you'll see if your moons are conjunct or trine, this is really what we're ideally all looking for for a marriage, for somebody that we could um, live with peacefully for the rest of our lives, happily ever after, raise a family with no issues. That is what you're going to get. Um, and I've seen it actually uh, in very long-term couples, moon conjunct moon, but like it's such an overpowering thing that the two may not come together because of it. They could just also have very different, even though they have certain similarities, they could have very different lives. Like I said, they could both be married or just there could be um, like some sort of distance or some sort of uh, like social, sometimes there can be like social, uh, different social backgrounds, if that makes sense where they can't, um, they kind of like, they could be di 
different ethnicities and look similar. They could be very similar to each other but have come from very different classes of society because remember there's an age difference and also because uh, there's different lessons for them to learn in this lifetime which is why we don't always end up with our twin flames and honestly I don't even really recommend looking for a twin flame because it's gonna be so intense and confusing and it's like such this process that we have to work through to even attain it that um, even if you meet them it's like there's no saying that it's ever going to happen so and if you meet a false twin they could do a lot of damage like almost like a Pluto Mars conjunction which is in the are you wasting your time video um, so if you meet your false twin they're gonna cause you pain. So your real twin will never cause you any pain. Uh, I've heard that on other videos, but it makes a lot of sense. Like, um, any kind of pain you feel in regards to your real twin is your own like selfish um, lesson that you need to overcome. Like, say you're feeling this pain, it's because you're pitying yourself or you're you know, feeling not appreciating what you have kind of thing, working through those kind of obstacles. But when it's a false twin, it'll be like stabbing you in the heart, just almost emotionally worse than um, like a Pluto conjunct Mars toxic sort of thing. And a false twin will often gaslight you too. They'll never explain anything to you. They'll tell you, you know, that things aren't the way they seem which is also another deal breaker video I wanna add. But okay, so I'm getting way off on all these little side tangents, but um, my advice is is that if you meet someone and it's really, really intense and you feel like it's your twin flame, just be cautious because it could be a false twin. But if it is a false twin, be, I give this lecture a lot to my clients when I see false twins, is that you know, at least if you meet your false twin, you know that you're probably being prepared to meet your real twin. Uh, and know that you might not end up with your real twin as your life partner. But if you do that, it, if there's that moon conjunction there, which there should be, uh, it'll be a very nice, peaceful life. If you two ever do come together, um, it'd probably be sort of the best version of the life that you two could live. But then remember that you'll have a duty to humanity together. Um, so it, coming from different kinds of social backgrounds, sometimes it can be difficult to uh, kind of come to an agreement on exactly what needs to be done as far as the work goes. Or the life partner, it's not, you know, so much relying on whether you two are gonna reach your highest potential in this lifetime. When you're with your twin flame, it really is about that. So it really does take two very motivated people in this lifetime to come together as twin flames and really want the same things in life um, and be working towards the same goals. And yeah, anyways, so um, really I advise you to look for life partner type of aspects like moon trine moons, sun conjunct moons, and also um, Venus conjunct Mars, Venus conjunct Venus. Uh, Mars trine sextile or conjunct Mars. I don't know if Mars conjunct Mars is good. That could be a little bit hot, heated. Uh, uh, but let's see, yeah. I think that the moon trine moon is more important than like a sun trine sun. Because a lot of times when suns are trine, you know, like for example, my Mars is in Gemini, so I end up with guys whose moon is in Gemini a lot. And there are, even if they're like a Leo or Sagittarius, if their moon is in Gemini, it's not connecting with my moon in Virgo. And neither is their Sagittarius or their Leo. It's all fire and air, right? So you want to really have that moon contact, even if it's like a Venus moon contact or even Pluto moon. There needs to be, and I read this a few different places, there needs to be some sort of contact uh, with the moon 
and the other person's planets and depending on what those are is how it's going to play out but you have to have that for a romantic relationship to work so a lot of times what you'll see is like the sun trying moon moon trying sun and that does bring longevity especially when it's the woman's moon and the man's sun or it's going both ways um but still at the end of the day if their moons are just really incompatible and there's other you know deal breakers or really challenging aspects then i don't necessarily feel like a sun moon conjunction is going to hold a couple up more than for you know four or five years yeah probably about that so um and you add in like a pluto square mars which is about a five to six year shelf life on relationships and you're definitely going to have that with sun trying conjunction it's not going to make it through that pluto square of mars that hits after about five or six years now i'm going back into the you know challenging deal breakers but i just think that you know i'll go over it in the part two of this video i wrote down like all the life partner um life partner aspects this is actually i wrote down my ideal astrological aspects that my perfect mate has with me and um I did put some of the ones mentioned in this video. Moon conjunct Moon, for example. Um, Venus conjunct Mars. Those are like the top two, right? And then Venus trine or sextile Venus, or even conjunct can be nice. But I don't want, uh, uh, I have Pisces Venus, and I don't want a, a guy with the Venus Mars conjunction in Pisces again, because they are lovers, let me tell you. They are like serial monogamous. They get into relationships so easily, so. Um, it's like I don't feel that special, <laughs> you know. All right, um, so I put sun conjunct sun. Sun conjunct sun is good too. Even if it's in a wider orb, like 10 degrees or something like that, um, it just creates a really nice harmony. But, you know, you still probably want your moons to be at least sextile, which means that they're, you know, either air, air and fire in that realm or they're water and earth. So... Venus trine or sextile sun, that's a really good one too. Especially if you're the sun person because Venus like really adores you. But you still need other aspects for that. But yeah, so so I wanna go through, maybe I'll actually do a series of them. Cause there's a, a long list. So um, yeah, these are all the positive aspects, but I thought I should start with the best ones, of course. Moon conjunct Moon and Venus conjunct Mars, and watch out for that Neptune conjunct Uranus, and really look at what's going on there. I have seen one instance, I think, where moons were conjunct, and the couple had Venus, or Neptune conjunct Uranus, and that was a pretty crazy, intense relationship. That's like one of those karmic twin flame things. I don't know, maybe those two... Because, you know, when you're twin flames, you come, you're the same soul. So, um, imagine whatever, whatever penance, penance, let's say that they're paying from the last life, if they've got Neptune conjunct Uranus with moon conjunct moon, they're just, it's a lot to deal with when you're dealing with someone in the 5D constantly, and they're, you're never able to bring them down to earth, but you have, you know, and then when, if you do meet on earth, ugh, it, it can get really complex. So yeah, we're not always looking for a twin flame trust. You and definitely don't get caught up with a false twin, but um, consult an astrologist if you have Neptune conjunct Uranus or you have moon conjunct moon with someone for sure. Or, and Venus conjunct Mars also, because there's a lot of variables there, right? But um, yeah, you can know that your false twin can feel just as real and maybe even more intense you can even have like venus conjunct mars with your false twin but it could be reversed where you know the man's the venus the woman's the mars the woman's aggressive and then that adds to this whole neptune conjunct uranus thing where you feel like this is a tw your twin flame because you're reading each other's minds and often you're causing one of the people to like have super heightened esp just in general in life it can activate their um their telepathy and things like that so at least when they're in the relationship if they're somewhat spiritually attuned then they may be able to keep it it may actually give them quite a boost i actually really do believe that played a role in me learning some of my um you know how to really use my clairvoyance on demand but i also have my moon sitting you know right on my ascendant between my 12th and my first house it's in my 12th house so when your moon is in your 12th house it's like 
automatically psychic, right? The 12th house is the other realm. It's Neptune, right? And so when you have your moon, my theory is sitting 4.2 degrees, so within a five degree orb of your ascendant in the first house, you're able to bring everything from the 12th into the first, which is what you show people, right? Your first house is your ascendant. It's how you come off to people. So you can take all of that energy from the 12th and bring it to the first. So I already have it in my birth chart and in other places as well. Mars in the ninth, that higher minded spiritual knowledge. But now I'm just getting off on like a huge astrology lesson. So, um, sorry for if it was a little edited and choppy in the beginning my dog was barking and then i got her to calm down so i have to go through and edit that out but yeah if you have any questions or comments below i would love to hear them because i do want to continue with these uh romance life partner aspects that i picked out and give you a better idea of what you're really looking for in a chart between someone and again i'll put the link to the cafe astrology uh, website where if you have the person's birth date with the year and yours you don't need the time and place for that one you can pull this and see everything except the moon aspects they're there they're in the chart they're not listed so you um you can find the moon aspects in the chart sometimes it'll be slightly off um but so don't take it like if you notice that their moon their moon might be natally in leo but when you run the the chart with yours it might push their moon into cancer so it's not because you're overlaying the charts and it has to sort of like line up almost like a composite so when you you know it's lining up with all the stars in the sky so when you do that it might actually push the moon so don't take the moon sign verbatim but if your moons are conjunct or trying you'll be able to see get a pretty good idea there of what's going on with the moons but you have to actually look at the chart and read it so depending on where you're at but for the rest of you you can look up all the others really go and run and see run those birthdays and see if you have venus conjunct mars moon well the moon conjunct moon won't be on there but you can see if the moons are together on the wheel um and then you can see if you have neptune conjunct uranus and if you have neptune conjunct uranus i would suggest that you probably um, start thinking about being prepared for meeting your real twin and actually letting go of this false twin because it's not going to be easy. False twins can be just as toxic tying and bonding as a Mars conjunct Pluto, if not worse, or and they'll gaslight you, or a um, twin, a real twin. So they can even be more um, attached to you than a real twin. Uh, false twin can be a lot about working through attachments, you know, that non-attachment, like not being attached to anyone or anything, and everything's from within, and you create everything as uh, above, so below, all of that kind of zen stuff comes from non-attachment. A lot of the lesson of a false twin is learning non-attachment, because they, they'll probably be an avoidant, and you'll be like um, a, de a codependent type and you're working through that because you can't have any of that if you're going to be with your real twin if you're going to be with your real twin there's a there it's already that you have to vibrate that high you have to vibrate at non-attachment you might get there for a moment and meet them or you guys might be there at times and come together or you it may knock you down a few pigs because it's so intense and you may not ever reach that alignment again but that's the only way you can really even connect with them so a lot of times the reason there's a runner and a chaser with real twins is because now i'm really getting into it is because um we want to make it happen like we want to i know you're somebody important and that's the lesson of the false twin is no but they're actually really not you know you got to step back and look at the bigger picture that's what you need to learn with the false twin so with the real twin you can't go about it that way or they'll always be elusive and out of your reach so you have to go about it as this non-attachment zen you know you're not attached to any outcome with them it, whether your circumstances are you only meet in your dreams or you've met a few times and then you dream about each other all the time or you know the proximity of them like you can pick up on where they are um you can read well reading each other's thoughts actually i think is more neptune conjunct uranus but i don't know i guess real twins can have telepathy too but they're usually on the same wavelength so even if they're not in contact they could be dealing with the same themes in their life right so if you have a real twin you have, you 
you have to vibrate at that level of non-attachment. You cannot go about trying to reel them in or go after them or contact them. It doesn't work. So I think I about covered as much as I can. Maybe I'll make a part two about, a little bit more organized part two about real twins, false twins and all that. But the next video in the series will be about all the romance life partner aspects that you are looking for because I see so many, you know, I don't get a lot of clients that have wonderful relationships. I do get some, they're like, hey, can you tell me about me and my husband's finances? You know, it's not the same kind of questions, right? Um, so when I get these, usually they're more difficult relationships and or working through the process and a lot of times it's just that patience of letting it unfold because it is a normal relationship, right? And it takes work, but um, a lot of times I don't see any rewarding ones. I don't see any of the good stuff that you really need to enjoy it. So. So I'm helping you all along the journey to find the good stuff. Okay, so I also below the link to Cafe Astrology, which I get no kickbacks for or anything. It's just a real quick and easy way to look up the charts. I use it all the time when I don't go into my deep astrology software with the birth times. And um, below that I put personal readings and extended readings. Uh, you can check out all my products on psychicschool.com. If you want to check out the tarot readings, uh, they're on the channel. On the channel, and I'm some organizing them. And also, you know, subscribe if you want to check out the big 144 series when I get to your sun and your moon and all of the rising ascendant combinations with each one. So we're going over 1,728 different combinations. Hopefully I can finish it in this lifetime. But until then, I'll continue to pop in with just some random aspect videos. Thank you.